Hello everyone, uh, this is Paul Kellef. I'm one of the professors for Earth Science and we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to be going on a virtual field trip. So I am down here in South Charlotte uh, near the town of Matthews and I'm going to be driving um, east and north uh, to a place called Morrow Mountain State Park. Um, it is extraordinary uh, in that it is um, an ancient volcanic mountain range uh, right here in North Carolina. Uh, if we look at what was going on when these rocks initially formed um, between five and six hundred million years ago, um, I've dropped a pin um, on our field site today, but you can see that the southern United States was riding along on a tectonic plate that included Africa um, and Europe. Um, it would not be until Pangaea came together that this slab of crust would be pasted onto North America. And then when North America, when Pangaea rather, broke apart, of course, this went with the rest of North America. And so, but that is a long way off. Um, so for now, though, this is an ocean continent convergent plate boundary, um, not unlike the Pacific Northwest of North America, right, where you have uh, the little Juan de Fuca plate here getting pushed underneath North America, uh, melting, magma rising, and making the volcanoes um, of our Cascade Range. And so that's what was going on, um, you know, in North Carolina between five and six hundred million years ago. So if we look at the USGS topo maps, uh, for that area, it takes a minute to come up, there we are, uh, we can see now, once we get out there, we can see these hills. Let me uh, do a version of this I can draw on. So uh, we can see, you know, here's a hill. Uh, that's an ancient volcano, right? You know, here we go. You know, all of this is this kind of um, ground down ancient volcano. Now, when we get out there, it doesn't look like volcanoes. They look like big tree covered hills. They, they don't really look like volcanoes, but that is that is what they are. Now, we're going to be going up here. Um, and don't you just hate it? when your field area is in between two maps. Uh, but let me show you a trick here. Uh, if we go back to the USGS topo and we go down, let's go down a bit. Might take it a second here to fill in, but that's all right. We're gonna go, we went actually off the map um, down here. And there we go. So we got a handy little drawing down here uh, that shows us our map in the middle. And it shows us the maps that are around us, right? And sure enough, directly to the north is the Baden Quadrangle, and well, there it is. So, um, and so, you know, we're going to come up here in between Fall Mountain and Hathaway Mountain. Let me go back to a version I can draw on. Um, we're going to park right about there um, at that, where that 400-foot contour is labeled. Uh, we're going to walk down um, around this river. We're going to look at some rocks. And we're going to turn, we're going to follow the river, and eventually we're going to make our way back up here into the parking lot. Um, and so that's the plan. We want to go out, we want to have a look at these rocks uh, from this ancient volcanic mountain range. And so uh, next time I see you, I will be in the field. Okay, I'll see you in just a second. Hey everyone, so we're here. Uh, you can see behind me, we've got a really pretty uh, old growth forest uh, built on soil that's been built over literally hundreds of millions of years on top of the rock from these ancient volcanoes. Uh, you also see there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dead trees behind me. Um, uh, storms. <laughs> uh, there's been a few storms come through and taken out some trees. Uh, they wisely just left them there. There's no reason to take them out uh, because as they decompose, they will return nutrients to the soil. Um, forest ecologists call this big dead wood, and it's uh, it's a thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually uh, go over, show you something in the parking lot of all things, um, and then we will move on and we will uh, have a look at a building, and then we'll get down to some uh, some rock in the field. So uh, next time you see me, I'm going to be showing you something in the parking lot. Okay. So one of the things that we do as geologists when we go into a new area is just have a look at the rocks that they're using. Have a look at the rocks that they're using to build with and whatnot. And I'm just here in the parking lot. And this is a rock that they're using to edge the parking lot, just the grass. And we can see that it's kind of interesting looking. It's tending to break flat. Um, and it's got this very distinctive layering in it. Um, and in particular, 
if we pick up a piece of it right here, um, and I swear I didn't break that off or anything, it was just sitting there, but we can see that, you know, it's, it's wanting to break very, very flat. And I don't know if this is coming through on the video or not, but there's some really interesting kind of shiny stuff going on on the surface. Um, and you know, when we see rock that, um, <clears throat> it is doing this kind of layered thing, we start thinking one of two things. Um, either it's a fine grained, um, sedimentary rock, something like a shale, or maybe that's foliation and it's a metamorphic rock. Now notice that neither of those options is really igneous. And yet we're in an area that was volcanic hundreds of millions of years ago. In fact, from the parking lot, if I turn and we look up here, we can see a pretty substantial hill there uh, that is one of these, you know, remnant ancient volcanoes. Um, and yet this rock, is not volcanic that is not volcanic rock at this point we can kind of narrow it down to either sedimentary or metamorphic and so we'll uh, we'll narrow it down a little bit more later on i should stop moving it because it goes out of focus okay so i'm going to show you a building and then we're going to head down and find some rock out in the wild okay let me throw this down and next time you see me i'll be at a building Hey everyone, so here we are. This is just a little utility building out here at the, um, at the park. Um, this park was, is interesting. Um, during the, uh, the 1930s, uh, the Works Progress Administration came out and did a bunch of building, uh, just to give people jobs. <laughs> and so, um, you have here, I'll show you this old growth forest while I'm talking a bit here, uh, if you can see it through the shadows. But anyway, uh, so it has a lot of infrastructure. There's a pool out here. Uh, there's buildings. There's all kinds of stuff. So like I said, one of the best strategies when you're doing this kind of work, when you're out in, in the field, maybe in a new area, is look at the rock that they're using to do their construction with. Now, don't go looking at fancy buildings. You don't need to be looking at someone's fancy imported marble, you know, their Italian marble or something like that. Just look at the normal buildings, right? And we see the same thing we saw in the parking lot. Um, we see this, uh, this rock with this kind of layered structure. And we also see that it's either being, um, quarried along very flat surfaces or it's just breaking along flat surfaces. And we can see here that we've got some, some, uh, a little bit of what we would call conchoidal fracture where it's tending. If it's not breaking along here, if it's breaking in another direction, it's breaking in these curves. So, uh, that's kind of interesting and is giving us a little more of a clue as to what we might be dealing with here. So, um, you know, whenever you see a bunch of buildings made of the same stone, what geologists really want to do is go find the stone. So let's see if we can find this rock in the field. I've been here before. I know where the rock is. Let's go check it out. Okay, so I am about 100 meters from that building, and I've hiked down into a stream bed. Geologists, we love our stream beds. Um, you can really only learn so much walking along the quote unquote surface. Um, if you can find a place that's cut down through the rock, be it a stream bed or a road cut or a railroad cut or anything like that, you get a much better idea about what's going on. And you can see here that now in the natural world, uh, we have the same kind of rock that's tending to break very, very flat. Um, and then, of course, the nice thing about stream beds is they wash all kinds of rock. I'll go upstream here, give you a look at it. There's all kinds of rock up there. And then we can come past our flat breaking rock here. And then there's what the trail ahead of me looks like, uh, just crossing back and forth over this stream bed. But you can also see, and I'll just walk up to it and give you a little bit better look. You can also see here where we have a lot of rock broken off. Um, rock obviously washes downstream. So when we look at an area like this, with this broken off rock that we call float, um, just within this one area, it gives us a pretty good idea about what's going on. We know all that rock had to wash downstream, so it started upstream. And so without necessarily needing to move around a lot, uh, 
you can get an idea about what's going on. Now, I only see two or three different kinds of rocks in there, so, so whatever's going on here is pretty consistent from place to place. But if I look right up here, you can see what practically looks like a wall. Uh, it looks like it was made by people, but it was not. Uh, that's, that's a natural thing. And so we can see, we continue to see rock breaking very, very flat along this stream cut. And so I'll, I'll walk down here, show you this one other one, and then I'll pick up again um, a little bit later. But we can see as we move along here, this rock here, and it really does look unnatural it looks like uh you know someone carved it but they didn't this is very natural um this is just what this rock looks like and so uh it, it's really phenomenal it's really beautiful out here uh and so so we have this we have this rock that's breaking very very flat and what's more um it's breaking flat but it's not breaking flat parallel to the ground so uh so let's see if we can figure out what's going on and we're going to walk this way and we'll see if we can work this out hey everyone look what i found so it's the rock from the parking lot and if we kind of zoom around here we can see that there is a lot of it actually it goes all the way over here and uh, i'll just give you a little look around here this is uh about 50 yards from where we were before now the thing you want to get used to or one thing you want to get used to here is that it doesn't look exactly um like the rock in the parking lot it's a little bit greener um it's um you know it's got lichen growing on it and uh this is one of the first things that geologists have to get used to is you know we learn rocks one way in a lab or something like that and then we get out in the field and there is a a period of time during which you are just lost um as you're just not getting uh what's going on because the rocks don't look anything like what you learn in the field or rather in the lab but here you can see that you know we've got that same thing going on we, you can you, know, you can see this one just making a brick for us uh we can see that tendency for the rock to break in two directions one of them this way and then the other one this way and so it really does tend to just break out into uh very nice bricks and this is where they were quarrying uh the rock to do the buildings it's not far um you'd have to carry it uphill a bit but that's okay it's not very far and it's a very reasonable place to be getting building stones from um and so what is it well the locals call it rhyolite and this points to some danger in um you know just kind of going with what the locals call it because rhyolite is an igneous rock and this is not igneous um it is a here we go guys a meta rhyodacite not really important it's a metamorphic rock right this tendency for it to break along this plane right here is the foliation uh, that's that layering that metamorphic rocks develop. Now, the cool thing about foliation is that the direction that the pressure that made the metamorphic rock came from um, is uh, perpendicular to the direction of foliation. So if our direction of foliation is running this way, then we know that the pressure was running this way, was actually running in this secondary breakage direction. And so, you know... Metamorphic rocks are useful because you can use them to reconstruct ancient tectonics. And in this case, we're going to use it to reconstruct the direction that that pressure was, is running in. Now, uh, you know, we could get out a fancy instrument and, you know, actually measure that angle and do all kinds of cool math and stuff like that. But for our purposes, you know, we just know that, okay, yeah, you know, the main direction that rock is breaking is foliation so the pressure was perpendicular to that and so for our purposes today what that does is that makes really nice building stones uh, you can just pull them out and uh, build a building with them um, if they're not quite the right size whack them just right and they'll break uh, very flat for you so it makes a very good uh, very good building stone this uh, this same foliation is um, is why we make a lot of times we'll make a tile out of the metamorphic rock slate, even roofing tile, uh, because it does. It breaks very, very flat along that one plane. Okay, so this place is beautiful. So I'm going to hike in that direction for a bit, and uh, I'll be back with you soon. Okay. Hello, so there's some rock. 
And it looks like the same rock we've been looking at all day. And if we were doing work out here to try to reconstruct the tectonics, we might be inclined to take some measurements on it uh, so that we could get the direction of the foliation and the direction of the pressure and all of that. But don't be fooled. That rock is float. It's been broken off, right? Once it's broken off and moved around, it's useful, but it's not useful for that. And it's obvious I'm kind of cheating a little bit here because if I go upward, you can see how that's part of some rock that they've placed there to shore up the trail. But it's very important that when you're doing this work on tectonics and you're working out the orientation of the foliation, it needs to be attached to the bedrock, right? You can't just pick up any old rock and do that it's not always easy there can be some really big pieces of rock that are still not attached to the bedrock we call that float float is useful for some things not for orientation purposes not for either bedding or foliation or anything like that not useful uh, like i said this was kind of obviously placed there to shore up the trail so that's pretty easy but it's not always that easy so you want to be very careful when you're out here and you're doing geology if you want the orientation of something make sure it's not float okay moving along so here we are just down a bit from that outcrop and i just kind of wanted to show you guys something uh, i'm hiking along the stream you can see it down there and if i look um downstream we can see a pretty substantial stream valley that's been carved by a pretty small stream um this is called an underfit stream uh, this is a stream that is really currently too small um, for the valley that it occupies. Uh, now, you know, some of this is time. That stream has had plenty of time, you know, to cut down through um, and make this pretty big stream valley for the size of the stream. But another thing to keep in mind, um, anytime you're doing geology, um, let's say north of Long Island, um, um, New York, <laughs> um, you have to keep in mind that that area was covered by glaciers. Um, until a few thousand years ago. Um, and then anytime you're doing geology or what we would call geomorphology, looking at landscapes, um, in the lower two thirds, you have to understand that when those glaciers melted, they sent all kinds of water south. So we have a lot of underfit streams in the southern two thirds of the United States because of glacial melting. And so this stream used to be a lot bigger than it is now uh, because it used to be getting fed by melting glaciers. It's not anymore. So what's left is a relatively small stream uh, just being fed by rainwater around here. So, so you, know, you always have to keep in mind what came before uh, when you're looking at landscapes and when you're trying to sort out what's going on here. Uh, it's, um, underfit streams are very common. Uh, in like the lower two-thirds of the United States. Okay, hiking on. Hey, so I'm about to turn left and hike up out of this stream valley, so I figured I'd do my little wrap-up down here. So this is what geologists do. You know, we go into the field, we pay attention to what's going on, and um, in this case, we're dealing with metamorphic rocks, so we would be, you know, measuring that foliation to get an idea about tectonic pressure, uh, tectonic stresses, uh, and whatnot back when these rocks were metamorphosed. And so, um, if it was sedimentary, we'd be doing something a little bit different. If it was igneous, we'd be doing something a little different. But, but you know, what we do is we go into the field, we look at the rocks, and we figure out what happened, right? And that's, that's the fun part. We're not just looking to give it a name. The name was secondary, right? The interesting part is, you know, what happened out here to make it look like this? In the case of the rocks, what happened? But, you know, in the case of the underfit stream, what happened? There's all kinds of things going on. Um, and this is what geologists do. We go into the field and we sort it all out. Okay, uh, you have a handout. Um, go ahead and do it and stick it in the Dropbox and uh, that'll be done and this is going to count as a lab. So so uh, go ahead and do that and um, if you need to go back and watch the video again, go back and watch the video again. All right, okay, you guys take care. Bye-bye.